What was a loophole that you found and exploited the heck out of? Copied and pasted from the last time. Back in the day, 2007 stroke 2008, I found a major flaw in the pose at Blockbuster. Their system would update overnight, but only certain parts, and these parts were on different days of the week. Their new item prices would update on Thursday, their used prices would update on Friday but their trade in values would update after closing on Sunday. This meant if a game dropped an MSRP, its new version would first lower on Thursday morning, $49.99 to $19.99, and be cheaper than the used version. The next day, on Friday morning, its used version would be lowered, $47.99 to $17.99. The trade-in value would still be the same usually $30 to $35, even though you could pull the game off the rack, buy it for $20, then trade in back without leaving the line. I did this a few times and felt bad so I emailed corporate to let them know about the loophole. They told me they didn't take in information suggestions from outside parties, essentially because I had that set up as part of their business strategy. I then proceeded to assist them in their endeavors by buying 25 plus copies of Beer Wealth from Best Buy for $9.99. $19.99 to $10 coupon, and trading them in $4 sign 800 in store credit. Then I repurchased all 25 copies with the store credit $4 sign 500. Then I traded them in again. Then I bought them again. I did this a few times over the weekend and ended up with $1,200 in store credit from $250 cash. Then I found a few games GameStop gave good money for and traded them in over there for store credit. I made some pre-order and eventually cancelled them and requested cash back for the deposit. I eventually got a letter from Blockbuster banning me from trading, but it had the wrong date, post dated for the next year, and I kept trading. I don't feel bad about it. I used to play a lot of backgammon and yahoo games, and some people were real jerks when losing. Most commonly they'd stall the game by taking the maximum 5 minutes per move, hoping I'd resign. I learned a way to boot these people off yahoo for as long as I wanted, by trying to log into their account. When I used the wrong password 10 times, the account was locked for 24 hours. They couldn't log in again until I chose to allow it. That's a fair way of dealing with those jerks. This was more grinding than exploitation, but it was fun. The grocery store where I lived had a fuel card you could sign up for. If you bought certain items, you would get $1 or $2 off per gallon, sometimes more depending on the item or week. One week, they ran a promotion that every one of their store generics would get $2 off per gallon, per item. I walk by the powdered Kool-Aid packets and notice they sell a generic version of that, $10 sign 1. I do the math. My vehicle has a 16.5 gallon tank. Gas costs $3.14 per gallon. Each packet of drink mix costs 0 0.10. Every packet of drink mix I buy will save me 0.33 at the pump. I will need 157 packets of drink mix to get free gas. This will save me $36.11. I should do this. So, I count out 157 little individual packets of drink mix, all kinds of flavors, and go to the checkout. I try to save the guy some time by telling him how many there are in each flavor, but the manager had walked by and stopped to see what was going on with the generic Kool-Aid. So, the poor guy has to scan every single one. The manager makes an awkward joke about the amount of drink mix I'm buying. But when I pull out my fuel card, my ploy becomes clear. The cashier reads off my new fuel discount and I'm on my way to the gas station, where I proudly fuel up my vehicle. I still had to pay $0.16. They wouldn't let you reduce the price all the way to zero. Then, I took all the generic drink mix and donated it to the local food pantry, because I hate Kool-Aid. It's cool that you added the local food pantry like that. Not truly a loophole, but I got a flyer in the mail one day from a pizza joint advertising $5 large pizzas on certain days of the week with a code that was valid for another month. I'm still using the code to this day. Three years later, it's only worked at the local branch so far, but I've been riding that gravy train as hard as possible. In this case I think it is a marinara train. By accident I found a gumball machine if you turned the dial really slow it would drop the gumball. 
Then you could dial it back just enough so the next gumball would drop into the tumbler bits. Then slowly dial forward again until it drops, etc. Got about 20 of them and stopped when I realized that I really didn't want to chew that much cheap gum. Ha, ha. Reminds me of my brother and his friend who heard that if you pull a gumball machine off the rack it slides off the change compartment and opens it. So they go to the store and try it. Pulling the gumball machine does not do this. Instead, it opens the gumball compartment and spills all the gumballs on the tile floor. Back when you could win a free coke under the bottle cap, I spotted a pattern where the caps that I won had a logo on the top that looked faded, whereas the losers all looked pristine. For two weeks, every day after school I'd stop at the UDF and exchange yesterday's cap for a new coke. A few years ago, there was a promotional sample of cat food. The bag cost $3 and it had a $3 coupon inside it. The coupon did not have a weight limit on it. So I bought a big plastic bin, put it in my trunk, and for an hour, went in and out of the store filling that plastic bin. $1 3 bag of cat food at a time. Cashing in the $3 coupon the previous bag gave me. I'm pretty sure I only saved like $20 but as the saying goes, 20 bucks is one less BJ I have to give for 20 bucks. Quite the saying. When I was younger, 12, 13, I had one of those stupid timers on the computer that would only let me use the computer 2 hours a day before I got kicked. Found out that if you minimize the screen alerting you that you have ran out of time, you never run out of time. Best summer ever. Mine would lock internet access on my account outside of 3 5 pm. I would just change the time on the computer. This past semester, I needed to take a biology class with a lab to graduate. I was told that it was one of the easiest classes at my school to take. But as a lit type, I didn't agree much. It was so much information all at once, and I found it really boring, so I didn't do so well on the tests or assignments. I got C's and D's, even on the final which I stayed up all night to study for. We also had a class blog, there were about 120 of us, and we each had to write 3 posts per semester on anything biology related. I didn't do well in the lab section, either. I failed the multiple choice test in the practical, and I assumed I was fricked. However, the professor said that if we made comments on our peers' blog posts, and turned in worksheets to show what edits we made, when, and on what topic, we could get 5 extra points per edit. Most kids did 2 or 3, I did 97. Got an A for the semester. The grind. So I wanted to get cheap coffee filters online as I knew I was going to need them for the foreseeable future and wanted to get a better price on them. So I found a site that had them at half price, $1.95 for 100 filters, usually $3.99 at the store, what I was paying at the store and put them in my cart. When I went to check out it asked me if I wanted to set up an automatic delivery to have them shipped every 2 weeks and they would reduce the price. I said sure why not, after all they were the cheapest I had found and getting them every week would mean I didn't have to keep ordering them. So it brought the price down by like to like $1 for 100 filters. I was thrilled. Then it asked me if I wanted to join the coffee savers program for more discounts. I said sure. So after joining the savers program it brought the price down to $0. I was stunned. I still had to add my credit card but I was never charged. So for 2 years I got 100 filters delivered to my door for free. Never got charged not once. One day though I got a notice that said they were going out of business and my free filters would end. I was sad, but the stockpile I amassed them lasted me about 2 years and recently in the past 2 weeks I had to buy new filters. Life will never be the same. One day though I got a notice that said they were going out of business. This is your fault. This is entirely your fault. In high school they gave students credit for interning. I started my own corporation and interned at it for my senior year. The boss graded me very highly, as well. I bet you only got good grades because you had sex with your boss. A long long time ago Hostess Chips, was the major brand in Canada at the time, had a Mario Bros promo. You got a bingo card in each bag of chips and every card was a winner. You had to scratch 3 of 9 areas and if you matched the icons you won. 
One of my friends figured out that using a tin can with a tiny hole punched in the bottom and then dropped down onto a 100W light bulb, you could see through the card and find the winning spots to scratch. This spread around town and a week later there wasn't a single bag of chips to be found anywhere. Sold out all over town. We all had garbage bags of open chips around. I won one grand prize which was a Super Mario Bros game. When I was a kid, 7-Eleven had these scratch cards where you could win a free Slurpee. Not understanding how the game worked, I took a card, scratched all the spots, saw that I had one, and happily filled up my Slurpee. The man at the counter was nice enough to let it go. There was a site where you could upload your own games and make revenue for every time someone visited the page. It turns out just refreshing the page counted as a visit. So I found an auto refresher and left it on 24 stroke 7. I made almost $2000 before they figured out what was happening and now it only works from different IP addresses. Reminds me of the band that had an album with silent tracks and had their fans play it on repeat at night on Spotify. Back when Hollywood video was around, they would guarantee new releases to be in stock. If they rented out all of their copies in the store then they would give you a voucher for a free rental. I was in college at the time and would go into the store near my college campus at around 10pm on a Friday night. There was simply no way for them to have any copies left by that time, so I would collect whichever vouchers were available. Rinse, repeat, cheaper than Redbox. Back in college we found a loophole with coupons at Kroger for General Mills cereal. If you bought 4 boxes of cereal each box was a dollar. But if you did the self checkout you would be printed out a coupon for $4 off your next purchase. We used the loophole to buy about 300 boxes of cereal. We only spent $12 on all of it. We would have spent less but we had to go to another Kroger once the manager got wind of us. We kept around 20 boxes for ourselves and donated the rest to the local food bank. They were so excited when we showed up with 3 vehicles full of cereal. Totally worth the $12 and all the time it took. I think you Robin Hooded Kroger. This is fairly minor, but several years ago, 7-Eleven ran a promotion where all of the big gulp cups had a sticker on them that had some kind of prize on them. The sticker had those little, wavy blue and red lines that you had to look at through 3D glasses to read. So, in theory, you had no idea what you had won until the clerk looked at it at checkout. Most of the prizes were crap, stuff like 25 cents off of a sketchy hot dog. But, one of the prizes was a free big gulp, so if you got that one, your big gulp was free. I memorized the pattern of blue and red lines, fished through the cups until I got the right one and got free soda pop for about 2 months until the promotion ended. Excuse me while I go check my insulin. When vending machines first started accepting credit cards you could swipe your card, select a drink and when the little drink pod starts moving to collect your drink hit cancel. The cancel button would stop the card transaction but not the machine so you could get free drinks. It was a sad day when it stopped working. Certain vending machines, the one that has a conveyor belt, if you stop it with your hand you can get like 4 drinks for the price of one. Around Halloween. Peep's website had a code to get 20% off at checkout for any order. It ended up working on all items, including gift cards. So I first bought a $3 gift card, then I used that gift card to buy a $4 gift card etc. Until I got to an $80 gift card. I then bought $80 worth of Peep's with $3. I told one of my friends and he did the same thing but got his gift card up to $1,600. I'm pretty sure that $1,600 worth of peeps still costs them less than $3 to manufacture. My friend works for a company where he spends the entire week traveling and staying in hotels and he can expense any hotel. Because of this my roommate and I listed our air mattress on Airbnb for $150 and he's the only one that ever stays there. He's only even in town once every couple weeks but whenever he is we have a small house party entirely on the company's dime. That is freaking hilarious. My college didn't put any dates on our student IDs. No graduation year. No expiration date. Nothing. As a result, I kept using it to get student discounts for years after I graduated. Mostly the 15% off J. Crew discount. Penn State fixed that by making IDs fall apart after a year or two so they could charge you for a new one. 
there was a Papa John's coupon for 50% off if the official PJ Twitter retweeted you. I found the code looking through their website. I got half off pizza for a year and a half. They also have if you enter 25 off in the promo code, you get 25% off. It still works after all these years. Back in the 80s, raffle for a car had write your own entries. Printed off thousands of pages of entries on my printer. One car. Unfortunately I was too young to drive. My sister totaled it before I got my license. Easy come. The printer ink was probably more expensive than the car. Years ago when online poker was a thing in the US, there were sites that let you look at statistics on other players. They'd give you like one free look, but I realized you could just manually change the player's name in the link and get unlimited free statistics from them. I used it a lot to see if someone was a good player or not before sitting down at tables with $20 plus buy-ins. This is a good one. I suck at poker so I'd exploit the heck out of it. There's these 3 Dunkin Donuts in my area that let you buy coffee cards basically you pay $200 for the card and can come through any part of the day, however much you want a day and get an any size coffee for a year. Well my mom bought one last year and it had expired, she bought another one this year and it looks exactly the same as the old one, they took no effort into changing the card at all, so my mom gave me her old one and I get free coffee whenever I want. The online community that played Diablo 2 created its own form of currency by trading valuable in-game items for rarings called Sodges, Stones of Jordan. For instance, if you wanted that rare plus attack power armor, you would buy it for 12 Sodges. Anyway, I figured out that there was a discrepancy between the worth of an Sodge in-game and its actual monetary worth on eBay. Same with magic items, but in reverse, I would buy Sodges on eBay for cheap, go in-game and trade them for rare magic items. Then I would sell those magic items on eBay for way more than I paid for the sodges. I made enough money to pay for college books, and other living expenses. Blizzard tried to capitalize on this when they released Diablo 3, but they failed miserably by regulating the market too much. The system worked in D2 because it was only regulated by the supply and demand of the users. This is a perfectly legal and acceptable form of arbitrage. Worked at Walmart. Employees can't take advantage of mismatched prices. C3DS XL labeled at $70. When they first came out, friend is with me. Hand him money to pay for it. Get new 3DS XL for $70. Probably about 8 months or so ago, Kmart accidentally ran an online ad where the PlayStation 4 was listed for something like $200 cheaper than its MSRP. Since Walmart does price matching, People were taking that ad into Walmart and getting PS4S for really cheap. My university requires that you change your password every few months or so. The new password can't be on that you've used in the past. Naturally this sucks because I have to remember yet another password. But you forget your password and reset it it can be anything. And it counts towards changing your password. I've had the same password for my entire college career. At my local movie theater, you could get a small drink for $2.50 or a large drink for $3.50, and large gets unlimited refills, or you could get a subby tea for $2.50, but they didn't give you the subby bottle because they wanted to avoid any broken glass incidents, so they poured the subby into the large cup, boom, and limited large drink refills, I saved several dollars that way. My son attends speech and occupational therapy every week. Usually it is a $35 copay for each therapy, but if I do them on the same day I only have to pay the copay once. It saves me about $140 a month. Awesome loophole. Hope your son improves his speech and motor skills. There used to be an electronics store called Hastings where I grew up that sold both new and used electronics. They had a deal that if you traded in 3 used games of a common type, for example, all PS2 games, you could get a brand new game for free, no strings attached, just free, any game of that system. So I would go into the store buy 3 incredibly cheap used games, Bass Pro Hunting or whatever it was called for $5, they had dozens, and then walk out, double back and then trade those in for a $60 brand new game. I did this constantly for a few months while being harassed by the managers there until they stopped the promotion.
It still exists today, it's just a bookstore now as well. In elementary school we had the accelerated reading AR program. You would read a book, take a test on the computer, and be awarded points based on how well you did. At the end of the year you could buy things at the bookstore with the points you accumulated. I had just finished reading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and got a perfect score on the test. The computer was only supposed to allow you to take the test once but I figured out you could take that specific Harry Potter book unlimited times. I racked up so many points and was never found out. I worked in a call center during college. Our main performance measure was the number of donations solicited per contact. If the person didn't answer or hung up immediately, it didn't count against you. I discovered a bug where, if I blew into the microphone just as the phone started to ring, it would register in the computer system as a no answer and dial the next number. I rode this out for several months before I got tired of blowing my microphone for 8 hours a day and quit. That sounds so boring. In the 80s Chuck E. Cheese's didn't shred the tickets you get out of their games and used to buy toys, candy etc. My friends and I were biking one day behind a strip mall practicing our wheelies and jumps. We saw a worker throwing a garbage bag of tickets into the dumpster behind Chuck E. Cheese. We grabbed it and then started circling back about once a week. Garbage bags and garbage bags full of tickets. We were doing so well. One of my friend's parents got in on it. She would take the minivan behind there and have her kids load up. And this is why tickets are now shredded. I think I still have a huge stockpile of frisbees and stuffed animals in my parents attic somewhere. I found out if you gently pulled at your tickets instead of tearing them off at the dispenser you could pull extra tickets out. I knew which skee ball machines were the best at this trick and could easily double my ticket haul. Bought a crappy Sega Genesis game. I think it was some flight sim which was the crappiest game I ever played. So I took it back to Kmart and got told no refunds for opened games. Replacement for the same one if broken. Annoyed that I couldn't get my money back I said it was broken and went for the replacement. They handed me a new copy of the game and my original receipt. Left and came back an hour later. I want a refund for this game. Here is my receipt and an opened game. Got my money back. Went and bought a different crap Genesis game. I was once the only person to show up to a Microsoft CRM event. Since I was the only person to attend I automatically won the door prize of a Xbox 360 with a Kinect. The downside of this loophole was 3 long hours of talking with Ms. Product Evangelists who were very disheartened and desperate to make a sale. I used to go to Ms. Events at my college because they gave away free shrink wrapped software which I would then sell on eBay. I used to work at a small town bank with an ancient computer system. We had a small stash of Canadian currency that we would occasionally exchange for customers free of charge either way. To do this, we looked up the current exchange rate and used our teller software to give us the value of dollar sign XXXX CAD to USD or vice versa. I found out one day that this exchange rate never updated and was stuck at 0 Canadian dollars and 72 cents to every 1 US dollar. This was back when the USD was lower in value than the CAD. Being the enterprising individual that I was, I exchanged all of my cash, not much at the time, I was 16, for CAD with the excuse that I was going there over the weekend. Went to a bank down the street and traded that crap in for an easy 50% gain or something like that. I did this over and over for at least a year until they finally fixed the issue with the computer. In college I bought a pack of coupons for Hungry Howie's Pizza. It had 3 coupons for a free pizza, no other requirements, just a completely free pizza. I would call and order my pizza, tell them that I had the coupon for a free pizza, show up and forget to give them the coupon every time. I always had it on me as a backup, just in case they did ask for it. But, out of the 3 coupons, they only asked for it once. I kept using them for months. Until the coupons expired, which I am sure they were looking for, I ended up getting a few dozen free pizzas out of them, which was great for a college student. If you ever win anything from the McDonald's Monopoly game you can do this. Just mention the coupon and then usually they forget to ask for it. When my friends and I were in 6th grade we were always looking for a hustle. 
We would collect our parents empty soda and beer cans to return to the Safeway near us for a few bucks to buy candy. One day they installed these big machines that automated the process so the employees didn't have to manually count the cans. You would put your can in the machine through a wide tube. It would roll the can around until it read the barcode, drop the can into a locked storage bin inside and you would repeat this until all of your cans were tallied. It would print a receipt that you would exchange for the cash amount of your cans at the register inside. My friends and I tied a can to the end of a stick, got the machine to read the barcode and then pulled the stick out before the mechanism would force our can on a stick into its belly. We did this once a week and got about 20 bucks each time before we would get nervous and stop so we won't get caught. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.